April is Alcohol Awareness Month, and for many people out there, we have been adversely affected by alcoholism. Some people can go out and have a good time and enjoy a few drinks and be responsible, but for other people, it truly takes over their lives. Today, I have in studio a sober wellness coach that will be talking about his program, his own sobriety, and so much more right after this. What is mindset? Our mindset is based on what we believe, and anything we believe in, we put into motion. I have spent my life putting the mindset of perseverance into motion, and now I am here today to share my journey along with others whose mindsets have changed the course of their lives. Hi, I'm Mindset Coach Lorraine Lindsay, and I believe that if you can change your mind, you have the power to change your life. So are you ready? Welcome back to another episode of the Lorraine Lindsay podcast. We are all about mindset here. We believe that if you can change your mind, you have the power to change your life. And today, like I said, we are tapping into alcohol awareness and talking about just that, about being aware of alcoholism, what causes us to, to drink and over drink, how do we get addicted to this thing? And we have someone not only who has lived that life, who has overcome that life, has been sober now for how long, Dorian? 27 months. Nice. That is what's up. Sounds like a little baby. I can, love can it. I know, you. right? My baby's 22 months old. Month by month, month by month. But you've been on the show many, many times, so I love to welcome you back. But you, since we first met, you've done quite a bit in that time frame. Yes. It started off with you, you know, telling your story to anybody. I mean, you were reaching out to podcasts and things like that and really sharing your story to ultimately saying, okay, I want to go beyond just telling the story. I want to create a program in which I can help people with certain steps to have some awareness and to help them overcome this um, monkey on many people's back, which is alcoholism. So let's just jump right into it. Tell us a little bit about, well, let's just start with your journey for those yeah. who haven't seen or heard your story before, and then we'll go into your program and, and what made this even come to life. Yeah. So about 2014, I was out with some friends, drank too much, blacked out, and ultimately fell from a four-story window and was in a coma for a few days and pretty much broke my body and had to learn to walk again, talk again, and re rehab myself. And during the last nine years, I was always curious of why was alcohol my choice of drug because it was never in my family. And also why was I always drinking to the limits of blackout? Mm. It was either sober or blacked out. So as I was going through the journey, I eventually cut alcohol out of my life because I got to a point, breaking point, to where I understood it was no longer serving me. And if I wanted to become better, improve in my business as a person, it was something I had to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So then once I got a coach, you, to help me unpack and learn that it was deeper than the act of drinking, that I was using that to cope and escape from some deeper rooted issues mm -hmm. that started back in childhood. So as I've been working through that and understanding and getting a deeper understanding of why I chose alcohol, I started to realize there's people out there who are struggling with it also. And they need somebody like me to put their story out there to show them they're not alone and that it's definitely possible to remove alcohol or at least cut back. Right. So. Okay, so we're going to scale it back because what I find very interesting is that you say some key things like you at some point you had this click in your mind that was like this is not serving me this is not um it is not leading my life down a pathway in which i want to go i mean and and you've shared it with me but even falling out of a four-story building and and injuring yourself with life-threatening injuries that still wasn't your rock bottom to quit and i know there are a lot of people out there who drink and they are at a point where they have had that conversation, but they just can't stop. So what was it now that you have time and you have a clearer mind to reflect that was it for you? And I know we've talked about this, that it wasn't just this one singular thing, no. but it was a culmination of things. And sometimes the smallest thing is the thing that catapults. So kind of take us down that pathway of what were the things that finally where you were just like, I'm done. Yeah, so after I felt the four-story window, I initially told myself, you know what, this alcohol almost took your life. You know, the way you drink almost took your life. So I told myself, I'm, I'm going to cut back. But that lasted like three, four months. 
once I was healthy again and able to be out with my friends again, I went right back to it. Mm -hmm. But I started telling myself little lies to make me feel like it was okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? You can drink, but as long as you don't black out, it's okay. Get just tipsy, buzzed. And I did that. Then one night I blacked out and I was like, dude, you can't be doing this. The last time you blacked out, you ended up in the hospital. Then I tweaked the rules a little more. Mm. I was like, you know what? As long as you black out, but you're at your friend's house, it's okay. So then I switched my drinking environment. We don't hang out with a certain friend, making sure we're safe at the house. So if I black out, whatever, I'm home, I'll go to bed. So I kept tweaking these rules, but the more I continued to do it, the I started noticing I was going down that same pattern mm. to where I was drinking two, three day benders every weekend. And it got to a point to where I got tired of my own shit. I got tired of waking up, having anxiety for days. I had to call out of work a few times at one point because I just couldn't perform because I was a fitness coach. I couldn't run a group class and I'm just crazy anxiety and I'm hungover. I smell like tequila. <laughs> and I would have turn the fans on right away. When the class went, I would turn the fans on like, I ain't finna smell this tequila. Like, no way. So there's all this so much work to have to like hide it mm -hmm. and, 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 and keep it from people. Because that's also a big part of it too where people start to feel ashamed or they know so they find their drinking buddies or people that will be acceptable but in their regular in their other side of their world they they kind of secretly live that life mm -hmm. and so for you was it just that i mean because at some point maybe the accident was at that click where you started getting more awareness of the pattern would you say that prior to that that you didn't have any type of inkling of awareness because maybe environment and things like that. You were just drinking a drink. You're a young guy. Did you have ever an idea in your mind like this has to stop prior to that? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. I got even when I got a DUI um, when I was 19. A year later, I went to jail for underage drinking. Um, when I was underage, also, I got kicked out the club in 86. I was drinking. All these instances, instances happened when I was drunk, but I never put it. I never thought it was a problem, mm. you know? What did you attribute those issues to? I mean, did you even, you're getting into trouble clearly yeah. and it's all while you're intoxicated. What was the disconnect? Um, I thought it was kind of just young and dumb. Okay. You know, like this is just kind of what people do. But a part of me, I mean, at the time I didn't notice, but when I think back on it, I'm like, damn, I was the only one out of my group of people or people was around that was going to jail. <laughs> like I went to jail, it seemed like every few months for stupid little things that all involved alcohol. Mm. And I just never, I put the two and two and got five. I couldn't figure it out. Right. Yeah. And then too, like, was there ever people in your life that were telling you, dude, you gotta get sober, you need to get help, you need to quit drinking? Did anybody even bring that to you? No, never. And as I've been going through the sobriety journey and also building my coaching business, I started to realize, and working with you as I started to realize, it's hard for others to think or see that you have a problem when they're in it with you. Right. So if we're all drinking together every Friday, you know, playing beer pong and all that, in their mind, they're not thinking, oh, he has a problem. Right. You know, or he needs to cut back a little bit. And a part of that might also be, we talked about it today, like mm -hmm. not too many people are willing to, I'm going to say confrontation, but willing to bring that up. Like, yeah. hey, man, you got a problem. And also, I think because for me, how I always viewed a problem when it comes to alcohol was something you see on TV. You know what I mean? Like they're drinking every day, right in the morning, right at night. They can't do anything without alcohol. That's how I used to view being an alcoholic right. or having a problem. That's a good point. When in reality, it was me living my life through the week, regular person, regular friends, going to work. But on the weekends, I was an animal. It's interesting because I happen to know about your program because we, we talked about your program extensively when you were building your program. Yeah. And one of the things I think it's in your week one or week two of your program is you talk heavily about cognitive dissonance, about this rationalization that we do. And it's interesting exactly what you said is that um, people will rationalize uh, their limitations. And there's a saying, and I think it's my Angela who said or whomever says, when you argue your limitations, you get to keep them. Mm -hmm. But then also too, understanding the proximity, the people that you surround yourself with. And I've learned that in my life, just in general, for many different facets, right? Whether it's a money thing or relationships. If I'm hanging out with all my single friends who are walling out or they're jaded from men and they have issues with men and I'm in a relationship 
that conversation, if I spend too much time with him, is going to rub off. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to start nitpicking my relationship and breaking that relationship apart. And we don't even realize how that like really sucks us in and drags us down. When did you realize for you, or did you ever realize that as you were getting sober, that your proximity was also a big influence as to whether or not you could stay sober? Or did you, when you made the, your mind up to be done, did it really matter? Or did you have the control or did it take some time? It took some time. So initially when I decided to stop, um, it was a buildup of events. You know, I started telling myself only on special occasions will I drink. That way I can limit how much I was drinking. Like, and I mean, close friends, like birthdays, not your friend's cousin, friend that I know. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Actually people who I can call and talk to on a daily basis when it's their birthday or their kid's birthday or their graduation, that's the only time I'll drink. That way I'll separate and spread out how much I was drinking. That's how I began to get away from it. Okay. But then the hangover started to get real bad and I was like, you know what, that is it. And I understood at that in the very beginning, I didn't have the willpower mm. to just continue to hang out with people when I knew they wanted to drink on the weekends and be doing that's activities. That's powerful realization. Yeah, and so I just, took a step back and focused on my business, myself, and understood I needed to do that. It was hard because you feel alone. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel like you're all by yourself. There's not too many people you can meet that are willing to do certain things without alcohol. And at that point, I didn't even feel comfortable doing certain things without alcohol. I didn't know. Right. Every weekend, every fun activity included drinking, going downtown, going to Parkway Tavern, going to sushi, you get some sake bombs, everything included alcohol. So that's why I just stayed in the house. And it was hard because you're just to yourself. You're with mm -hmm. your thoughts. You get bored and you just sit there, you know, and um, it was very uncomfortable. Yeah, because you kind of realize how much your life was um, married to it. Mm -hmm. Right. It was like your it was your spouse. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's go have it. You know, let's go out. Let's go do our thing. And it included the, this drinking thing. And I think that that's like really imperative that people understand that, because I think when we are ready to make radical shifts in our lives, uh, when we're ready to get rid of things that we know aren't serving us. I think a big component about uh, with that is understanding the real reality of what's going to happen as a result of walking away. Because it's literally going to be a total interruption of a pattern that you've had forever long that you've had it. So in your program, is that something that you incorporate with them where they have some way of like really understanding what it's going to feel like to quit? And, and, and I love that because you're coaching this thing, because you've been there, you can literally say exactly how they feel and co totally have empathy for them because you've been there. Yeah. So is that something you incorporate when you're teaching or when you're doing this, your program with the with people who are looking so for So initially in the beginning, what I tell them to do and, and what I let them know at the very beginning, this program, it's right now, as of right now, it's five weeks, my, my extended, but I don't tell them, hey, today, no drinking for the next five weeks. All I ask them to do is moving forward, starting day one, is start to be more aware mm. and start getting more curious. So when you start noticing you're drinking a little more than you should, or you're drinking consecutively, start sitting back for a second and start thinking of why you are, but also give yourself some grace. Mm. Because I know a lot of people, they tell themselves, all right, I'm not drinking tonight, or I'm only gonna have one. And when they go overboard past their limits they thought they had, they beat themselves up. Yeah. So now you're in this shame and this guilt and you don't want to be on an emotional roller coaster. Right. So in the very beginning, let them know that. And one thing I also let them know is you really might need to separate yourself from certain people in certain environments. But that doesn't mean forever. You know, it just means you need some time to collect yourself, gain that mental strength mm -hmm. and understanding that certain environments and certain people trigger and bring out things out of you that you don't want right now, mm -hmm. which is the alcohol. And I also recommend they tell their closest people the mission they're on because they're really your friends and they no really support. support you. Yeah. If me and you were out and I'm ordering shots and I see you get a shot, if I'm really your problem, Hey, I thought you said you were done drinking. Well, that's a good, interesting thing because how, cause even for me, okay. I remember when I was doing fitness mm -hmm. and uh, training and it was very extensive training. Your diet was very, very strict. And part of that diet was to eliminate alcohol from your diet. And I was on a mission to accomplish. I had a stage to get on. I wanted to do this thing. I would tell people I am training. It's a 12 week, you know, it's at the 12 week mark and I can't drink or whatever. And as much as I thought there were people that would support me, there were, when I would be out, oh, come on, you could just have one, it's fine. 
I'll make sure you just have one. So how do you get people? Because I, I see that also with people who don't drink. Mm -hmm. I have friends, including you, that are completely sober. Yeah. They just don't drink, whether it's because they struggle with alcoholism or they just don't drink. Yeah. And I will see other people really try to push them to have drinks. So how does someone navigate that when they still want to be out and socialize? That person or that thing that's doing that, got to go. Mm. Plain and simple. Because yeah. if you're really... Switch it up if it's a relationship or something, you know, like what they want you and tell you, come on, get back with him. Knowing damn well he's toxic, mm -hmm. knowing damn well he doesn't treat you right. Would you really want that friend around that's telling you to go back to that ex? It's the same thing. Right. Now, let's say you separate yourself from that person. Time goes on. That person might sit back and understand and realize that the mission that you're on, you know what I mean? You could probably have a conversation about it later, but it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But if it's for your own well-being and you're really serious about improving yourself, that's what it's going to take. Yeah. Like I had to remove myself from people. None of my friends ever, I'll say, shout out to all my friends. They never were like, hey, come on, you know, anything like that. They understood to the point now, if they were to see me take a, grab a shot or anything, they'd probably lose their mind and really right. call me out because no weed, no alcohol. That's how I'm rolling. Mm -hmm. Did anyone ever say to you when you finally got sober that they didn't know you had a problem? Did anyone say, well, I knew you were kind of out of control. I just didn't say anything. No, to this day, no, I, don't, I can't think of nobody who said that. I do, you know, they do mention how proud they are of me and some of them will text me and, cause initially when I first, that first year, mm -hmm. I was trying to save everybody. Mm. You know, when I get around certain friends or whatever, I was always trying to be in coach mode, like, <laughs> and I started to get judgy, right. you know? And, and that's when I around the time I started working with you and I, I didn't like it that I was, just cause I'm sober and all that, I don't need to force on anybody. I think people will get sober and fix themselves when they need to. I don't mind bringing it up to an awareness like, mm -hmm. hey, I noticed, you know, but at the same time, that's their journey. If they want help or something, they will reach out and ask. Yeah. What do you think the judgment was all about, though? Was there was it because there was this feeling of being alone? Yeah. And that you just wanted someone to take that sober train with you? No, 100 percent. OK, I think part of it was because it was just me, you know, my close group of friends, not many of us. And they're all still drinking and all that. I'm kind of like, damn, I'm like the oddball out mm -hmm. and. It's like, yeah, I want everybody else to be sober with me. Like, come see how great it is over here. Come see how, you know, but I have to understand and realize my relationship with alcohol is different than everybody else's. Right, right. There's people like you, you, you don't mind having a cocktail here yeah. and there, but you're able to have a cocktail. That's it. I just got it. You like it for the taste. You know, me, I didn't have that. My relationship was balls to the wall. We're getting blacked out, wasted or sober. Yeah. So I had to understand and realize that um, even now with the people who were in my beta group, some of them were social drinkers. Some of them were like me. Mm. who dr drank to cope or to escape. Right. And I had to bring that to their awareness. Like we're all different in here. But the great thing about the group is that because everybody's at a different level of drinking, they can pull inspiration from one another, from one another. Right. Like the person who's, who was like me drinking excessively can hear the person's story who only drinks here and there as she shares and says, Hey, I used to be a person who drank to cope. Now I just drink to be social. Mm. Interesting. So tell us about your program. Tell us about the discovery of this program, this desire to want to do it, because there's a lot of people who just, they get sober and they go on with their lives, but there was something compelling for you to say that I want to take this sobriety to the next level and help other people. So what was the inspiration behind that? How did you know that you were ready to do this thing? And what have you done to prepare yourself? So what kind of inspired me to do this was during my journey, I've always posted every month I'll post, Hey, I'm this amount of months, this amount of months. I'll share it wherever I go. I tell people. And when I started to get DMs or messages from people who've known me over years or just started following me, you know, like proud and congratulations. And then I'll get questions. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm trying to stop. What did you do? Hey, I'm trying to do this. What did you do? And I never even thought the idea of trying to coach people through it. Mm -hmm. But as I was going through it or becoming sober and kept getting people asking me, I'm like, you know what? I think it's time for me to put together what I used to help me and package it together for people out there who need help. Yeah. You know, and they don't want to feel ashamed and embarrassed because that's how I felt. You don't want to admit that you have a problem right. when it comes to alcohol. And it's hard to admit that problem or see it. Like we said earlier, when it's a social thing, it's right. everywhere. What do we right. do to celebrate? Let's go get shots. It's your birthday. You got a job. So I decided to build a program and to answer your question, I didn't know I was ready. You didn't? No. Okay. Um, it was something that was just in my mind. And I have you as a coach and I also have another business coach. And 
you guys just kept putting in my head like the people out there need the help. Yeah. You know, they need you to put this together for them to get them through this. The same way I got a coach and you is as with you, some way you have a coach and your right. trainer. We need somebody to guide us through these things. Yeah. And so I developed a program. I ran a beta group uh, a few weeks ago. It was a five week program. And every week we hit touch on a different level of the sobriety journey that I used to help me get sober. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, I'm living proof that it worked mm -hmm. because here I am 27 months. And my goal is to get people to a point to where they don't want to drink. Not to where they stop and they always think like they have to keep doing something to stop. I want it to be in the back of their mind to where they could be in a room full of shots and not even feel tempted. Right. It's like, that's how I feel. Like I can be in a ro any room, I'll, I pour shots for my friends. Which is crazy, you're at that point now in your sobriety that it's just a way of life for you. Yes. It's not like, oh, I really wanna taste it. It's literally just, I mean, you've literally been at my house for the holidays. Yeah. And now all of us are turning up and drinking yeah. and whatever and you've got your, you know, ginger limeade with your lime and you're completely content. You don't even bat an eye. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's incredible. What I also love is that you have a practical and a tactical approach to sobriety. Um, I think that again, you and I've worked, talked about your program as you, as you were building it. And I love that you are not only saying, here's my, my life story and this is how I applied it, but you've also went a next step and done research and started studying and trying to understand the categories of alcoholism, why people drink, that it's not just binge drinkers, there's people who drink all day long and really educating yourself on it, which shows that you have this even more, this app to do this thing, right? So what's next for this? Because I know you're gonna be, you have a uh, an event coming up. Yeah. Um, and then you're also going to be launching your next group of people who are looking to to have change. Yeah, so touch on what you said is correct. And it's crazy because as I was developing this program and going through the beta group, it did require me to do more research and understanding of drinking mm -hmm. and why people drink. And it opened my eyes to help me understand the things I did to help me mm -hmm. and put it to the front of me. Because in my head, I thought I just stopped. But no, it was some deeper stuff that I really did and went through to help me finally get to that point of, I don't want to drink anymore. Mm. And so next, I'm sorry to answer your question, also question. Coming up in May, I'll be dropping the program. So officially taking, I ran the beta group already. It was amazing. Had five people. I plan to take on five more coming in May. And also in May, I'll be doing a free workshop. Nice. Yeah, free workshop in May um, to kind of give you a taste and understanding of what the program is about, what to expect, and pretty much show you the value of it. You know, this is for people who are just tired, you know, tired of waking up and scared mm. to check their bank account after a night of drinking, scared to check in with their friends because they said or did some dumb stuff when they were drunk, um, scared of or tired of escaping, you know, or unsure why they drink so much. Mm. And one other thing that I noticed was I went into, I did a sober uh, workshop that another coach did. And honestly, there was nobody who looked like me in that group. Wow. So I want to be the person of color within this space to help people who look like me. Cause I think through generations of stuff there, there's just, like I said, nobody who looks like me in it. I've never seen nobody. And I want to help those people who have those generational traumas right. and are escaping with weed, liquor, porn, food, you know, we're all addicted to something. Right. And I really want to be that voice. And I don't mind being vulnerable, telling my story, telling what I went through the ups and downs so that you can feel supported. Right. And cause I felt alone and I don't want nobody to feel alone as they go through the sober journey. I'm calling my sober soldiers. I love that. Um, and then April, Sunday, April 14th is my sober wellness event. We'll be doing guided cold plunges, some breath work, we'll work out a little bit, have vendors and all the modalities, all the things we're doing, all the exercises are meant to help increase all those feel good chemicals mm, in your body. Love that. Cause what I've learned is that when those chemicals are low, the dopamine, the serotonin, the GABA, when they're low, we tend not to feel our best. And what do you want to do when you feel your best? You might turn to liquor to mm -hmm. help you feel a little better, help you feel a little more social. So these exercises are meant to help lift those up naturally. So now when you're out in the world, you'll think back to the event like, yeah. oh, the cold plunge kind of helped me. Let me go take a cold shower before I make this decision to get drunk. Let me go work out a little bit first. I'm feeling a little stressed. So that's Sunday, April 14th. Love that. And my birthday is the 17th. Oh, shout out. So if you want to give me Happy a French. Happy birthday. No wanna, shots, no shots. If you want to give me a French bulldog, let me know. 
a little Frenchie. Yeah. You had an opportunity to have a Frenchie and you didn't take it. That's true. So I don't want to hear it. Well, Dorian, I appreciate you. You know, I love these conversations. I'm super, super proud of you. You Thank know, you. you and I have become very close over the last, how long has it been now? It's been a year. Has it been a year? The first time I came on here was the end of March. Wow. I just came up on my Instagram stories. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, um, you know, like I said, you've become, you and I have become very close. I'm super proud of your progress and your openness. I think that that's like the key. Even when I'm coaching individuals, it's like you have to have this openness to receive new information, to be open to make shifts and changes and you've always been incredibly open and i've seen so much growth just in the year and um, i want you to just keep going and keep inspiring and keep doing your thing Thank and you. so for you out there if you know somebody uh that could benefit from this event come to the event even if you're not even if it's not about alcohol just come and try out all this stuff i mean the cold plunge that just having that visceral experience if you're feeling like like you said, down or you're feeling like off or you're not feeling strong or confident, come to an event like this and see what these different modalities have to offer you to raise your serotonin, to raise your dopamine and get you feeling confident and great about yourself. It's not like it only has to be people who are drinkers. Everybody is welcome to join. I'll put all the information in the link of this video. And uh, Dorian, what do you have to say to close us out with? What would you say mm -hmm. to people out there who are stuck in this world of alcoholism and they feel like they can't get out um and before you answer that question what i do want to add to that is that it's your life it's happened but we have such incredible what makes humans fascinating is that our, our ability to be so resilient and we don't give ourselves like you said earlier enough grace in that resilience because we allow the guilt or the shame to kind of rob us of our lives so what would you say to people out there who no, they've got that itch and they know that they they need this. What would you say to them? I would say start getting curious. You know, get, like you just mentioned, give yourself the grace. Don't beat yourself up. And also get curious. When you start getting that itch, when you start feeling like you need the drink, when you start feeling like you can't stop, sit back for a second, pause. Give yourself five minutes. Set a timer for five minutes and really dissect the why behind it. Mm. After that five minutes, you still want to do it, go for it. But don't beat yourself up because you gave yourself time to think about it. Every time, continue to do that. If the five minutes isn't enough, go to 10 minutes. You know what I mean? And gradually build because I think a lot of times we don't sit and think mm. about our feelings. We kind of just, it comes and we kind of do whatever we can to escape that discomfort mm -hmm. and go towards what's comfortable, which is you're feeling down and out, a couple shots, oh, you're going to feel back to normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you can't escape forever, man. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dorian. I don't know why you go there laughing. Because <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're man. like relating to it in your head, I think. Oh, uh, whatever, man. Yeah. Just... <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, do not forget to hit the subscription button. Thank you again for your continued support. And again, I will leave all of the information for Dorian below this um, podcast. Until next time, ciao.